Good evening, Malden. Welcome to the Malden Zone, TMZ. I'm your host, Joe Piantadosi, and we're going to go right to my guest because he cannot spend the entire show here tonight. So welcome back to some uh, some POS material and um, uh, some information I'll talk about later. But my guest tonight, and of course, Francis isn't ready for it, is uh, yeah. <laughs> is a city councilor, um, you know, Neil Kinnon in Ward, I'm sorry, it's Ward, Ward 6. six. Ward Maplewood. 6, Maplewood Square, and that's where you were born, grew yeah. up in? in born, grew up. Uh, the same my family's been, uh, yeah, I live a few blocks from my parents. My parents still, uh, same house you grew up? Same, they're in the same house I grew up. Now, in, yeah. your whole they've life been, in Malden, if you haven't moved out uh, at all, whether than school? Only for two, two years for school. Wow. Yeah. It's funny because yeah. um, I'm that way in my hometown of Winchester, and uh, my wife, for one, made fun of me for years, and now she kind of accepts it and, and thinks it's, it's kind of cool. She was a military brat, okay. so she moved around, her family moved around. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think a lot to be said for someone that... Um, yeah, today it's, it's a little different, you know, but I think you'd, you'd find that in most of, the, uh, most of the elected officials here have been here their entire life. Yeah. Uh, my family's been here, like many, over 100 years. Wow. Um, I'm fortunate to have both my parents still. Uh, my father's 87. Come you know. yeah. My mother's probably about 40 years younger. I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> you got to say that. Yeah. You got to say that, right? You know, um, uh, and live in Maplewood. Excellent. You know, so good health and they're excellent doing, health. Oh, excellent team. health. Um, what was your dad? What did he do prior? To his re he's obviously retired yeah, now. He, he was a uh, he worked at Raytheon. He probably wouldn't want me to talk about yeah. all this. So, yeah. <laughs> but um, but he's retired and oh yeah, yeah, been retired for many years. Uh -huh. uh, my mom worked in the uh, uh, for many years in the Marlin School Lunch Program. Oh wow! You know, as a uh, making the meals and Excellent. stuff like that down on Pearl Street. Central actually. Kitchen, yeah, sure. Central yeah. Kitchen. He used to deliver bread there. Oh okay. I yeah. mean, your mother maybe received it from me. I used uh -huh. to drive the truck. Yeah. But. Uh, uh, a lot going on in the city now. Yeah, so know. now so you've been a, a city councilor. City councilor since, since 2007. Seven. Wow, okay. You know, and, uh, you know, ran into you the other night yeah, over at, at uh, Chow Patrick's Chow at Chow the Model YMCA Chow Hounds. Yeah, it was a fun night. Uh, and, uh, well, it's funny because, Ed, uh, of course, I, 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 I remember you when you were the, the, the fire commissioner. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> we I try was, to put that in our past. I was know? active with the chamber then, very active, and, and I know you were... Uh, you know, close to, to the mayor, and you were, yeah, I remember there was some controversy, stuff there, but, all, but all good. Time. How many years were you commissioner now? I was commissioner for eight years. Wow, a yeah. long time. Yeah, from uh, 97 to 2005. I served a little time on the DPW commission after that, uh, and then ran for Ward 6 uh, councillor uh, in a special election in 2007. The former councillor, unfortunately, uh, uh, had passed away, you that know, was Eileen Fay. Yeah, yeah, really sure. Um, and so I, I was elected in a special election in the spring of 2007, uh, and have been on the council since that time. Yeah. It's been very interesting. Uh, uh, ran uh, really because of uh, crime issues in Maplewood at the time. Yeah. Uh, the crimes. Uh, we had all kinds of problems. Uh, and I think uh, we've addressed a lot of it. Uh, our incidents per day in the first six months I was in was 1.68 incidents a day. Uh, so far this year, we're down around 0.75 incidents a day, uh, which is below the city average. Uh, and have been very fortunate uh, this, uh, this summer uh, and through this year, uh, particularly with uh, very little violent crime in, uh, in Maplewood. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest thing that's happened this year is, uh, is unfortunately, I'm here on TV tonight, but uh, the Citizens Bank yeah. uh, in Maplewood Square, I don't know if you saw that no. story, was robbed last, uh, last week. Oh. Uh, a gentleman came in with a hoodie and a hat. Um, Did see that? Yes, I did. And uh, they got a great picture of him. Yep. Uh, I, you know, pretty sure he's going to be apprehended. And uh, and it's uh, we have cameras today. Uh, that was one of the primary things. It's uh, there's cameras all over the square. Mm -hmm. uh, was that one of the things that that's that you, one of the things that, that you, yeah, you pushed for? That, that you? I was pushing for. Uh, and actually, it was implemented not through the city, but through both the Mall and Housing Authority, uh, and in uh, 
the Mystic Valley Regional Charter School, which dominates, you know, they rent the, uh, yeah. both the schools down in St. Joseph's and the former uh, Maplewood uh, School, yeah. a part of Mystic Valley Charter. Yeah. Now, the new Field House as well, uh, which opened last year for Mystic Valley on Route 60. Yep, yep. I don't know if you've seen that on the field yeah. down there. Uh, that Field House is actually in Ward 6 as well. So yeah. the, the Ward's pretty, pretty large. Yeah, right. Uh, How many residents? Uh, there are uh, seven, about about 7,600, 7,700. What's the uh, biggest residents. ward in the city? It was Ward 6. I couldn't tell you that. Uh, they've redistricted. Yeah. Uh, so they uh, every 10 years they do mm -hmm. that. And uh, they they actually have to make the wards uh, equal. E fairly wards, equal. Yeah, right. uh, and Ward 6 had uh, grown substantially we, you know, uh, before the redistricting. Uh, I had about 8,600, 8,700 residents in the ward, uh, which was probably seven or 800 more than any other ward at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so in this, uh, after the census every 10 years, they redistrict, the state has to approve of it, <coughs> and that happened last year. So uh, I lost some, uh, some of the ward was uh, mm -hmm. moved over. Uh, you know, m most of it o on the other side of Eastern Ave. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, you know, uh, got a lot going on, yeah. a lot what, going on in the city. What else now, other than you, you, you've well, uh, helped lower the crime rate in, uh, we, yeah, in the field? I mean, the, and the, uh, the, field the, the police department, uh, former Mayor Howard, uh, was very good to the ward in terms of, uh, you know, after I got elected, and there's no, you know, I make no bones about it, I was an ally of, of his for, uh, since, bef you know, before he got elected. Sure. Uh, and, uh, well, luckily we have in Winchester now too. He's yeah, you. I think. Great addition uh, to the sound. Yeah, I think from a fiscal standpoint. Yeah. Uh, you know, he left the city in great shape. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure a lot of people out there realize that. Mm -hmm. uh, in you know the years he was in, uh, he and I, uh, you know, in, as a counselor, I represent the uh, citizens of Ward Six. Uh, we disagreed on the implementation of the uh, pay as you throw program, mm -hmm. uh, but there's little to no arguing behind it, uh, you know, bringing uh, some financial stability to the city at a very difficult time. Uh, difficult decision for him, difficult decision. Uh, there are two sides to every issue. Uh, it certainly uh, uh, made recycling uh, go up significantly, uh, which to me was a huge benefit of the program. Uh, things need to be worked out there. I think the current mayor uh, understands that. I think he's got a committee that's working on that. And, uh, and uh, certainly uh, there are some on the council who are willing to make some moves uh, going forward in the new year. But uh, we've had a paper uh, which was tabled just last week uh, on the council, uh, but only to wait to see what this committee comes out with. But I do expect, uh, as the mayor has promised, uh, that something will take place in terms of modification of our program next year. Uh, but to get back to the former mayor, uh, for the citizens of Ward 6, I mean, he gave us a beat cop in Maplewood Square uh, my first three years in office, uh, and the police did a, you know, tremendous job for us. Uh, that really helped lower the crime rate, bring it back, things under control. Uh, and, you know, I say this with, uh, with a lot of pride for the neighborhood, uh, but I think that Maplewood Square uh, is the uh, uh, is the most vibrant square in the city, not Malden Square. Uh, I hope Malden Square sometime becomes that. Yeah. Uh, but we have, uh, you know, uh, 50 plus businesses in Maplewood Square. Really? Is that oh yeah, very. Okay. Most people don't realize yeah, that. Very few vacancies. We have two dentists. Uh, we have a meat shop. You know, how many places have a meat store anymore? Today, we have yeah, a meat yeah, store. Yeah. We have a fish market. Uh, we have a great Italian restaurant in Serena's. Uh, a great uh, breakfast place and you know lunch place in uh, Franny's, who Patrick's we are, and, pa and Patrick's uh, there that you were at the other night. Yep. Uh, you know, uh, tremendous uh, amount of you know hair salons. Uh, we have an acupuncturist, a physical yeah. therapist. Uh, you name it. The only thing I think that we don't have that we had when uh, when I was a kid there was a, and I, I hope I'm not making a mistake here, but. Uh, an actual uh, doc medical doctor. Uh, you know, we, we haven't had a medical doctor for some years. It'd be good if somebody moved in. 
but it is, uh, we've got a clean as, uh, uh, you know, what do they call it when they fix your pants? Uh, Taylor. Taylor, we have a, <laughs> yeah, Taylor, a USA Dry Cleaning Tie, she's Excellent. a great woman. Uh, you know, has run, runs a great business. We've got insurance agency. Uh, so, you know, a uh, drugstore. Who has a drugstore anymore? anymore? Exactly. An actual, yeah. you know, uh, non-affiliated drugstore. The last, in Winchester, yeah. the last one just closed, the last independent. Really? So, I mean, it's amazing yeah. to me, uh, but uh, the, you know, our seller drug uh, is still there. Uh, funeral power, you name it, we got it. We got the most, one of the most successful schools, uh, you know, uh, one of the most successful schools in Massachusetts and some, you know, like Newsweek, U.S. News, and, uh, and the, Wall uh, the Washington Post would tell you, Mystic Valley has one of the best high schools in the yeah. country. Wow. Uh, so, and it all originated out of Maplewood. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, got a lot going on that's yeah. pretty good. Uh, other funny. things that need to happen. What needs to happen? Uh, yeah. Streets need to be, you know, we've had uh, a lot of water pipes uh, repaired actually over a year ago. I know the mayor's coming down with a capital improvement plan. You'll hear about a CIP. Uh, it's going to be a big one. Uh, I think he's got some good ideas there. Uh, in terms of not just repaving the streets, but if you're going to repave the street, uh, it makes no sense not to do the sidewalks at the same time. Right. Uh, so he's going to uh, redo those. Uh, interest rates are very low, as you know. Yep. Uh, so there's not a better time, mm -hmm. at least in my lifetime, right. uh, and certainly in yours, uh, to, to go out and bond. Yep. If you're going to bond, this yep. is the time. Um, and so, I, you know, uh, I got, I've got uh, streets out there uh, that need to be fixed, uh, but I would tell you that, uh, you know, either on the table for uh, the coming year or since I've been elected, uh, we've had over four miles of streets done. Uh, one street which I have not uh, uh, succeeded in getting uh, done, there were four streets I wanted to get uh, at least uh, a good part of them done, Elwell Street, Beachview mm -hmm. Ave. Uh, Bishop Road because it had the uh, uh, pipes which were the oldest probably in the city, barely wa any water pressure, and, uh, and Neal Street. Now Beachview, Elwell, and Bishop have been done to a large extent. Uh, Neal Street hasn't been done so I would tell you that I have failed the residents in that standpoint, uh, but I have gotten a recent promise from the mayor. Uh, that he's going to get up there and do Beach Street in the next year, I mean, uh, Neal Street in the next year. So uh, those are the good things happening in my ward uh, throughout the city. Um, for those who didn't catch it, uh, last week the city council upped the residential uh, tax abatement uh, to 30%. Now, uh, what that means is that uh, they get a discount on their uh, tax bill if they're resident owners. They live in their home mm -hmm. uh, of 30%. And the way that happens is uh, in Prop 2.5, you can only raise taxes 2.5%. But we have many non-occupied homes in the city. Uh, from my standpoint uh, and from the other councils, because it did vote 11 to nothing, uh, you know, we originally started my first year, my, one of my first votes was for this. And it was at 5% um, five years ago. And, uh, and we've uh, raised it all the way to 20. Uh, and uh, then, then we had to go to the state for a uh, home rule petition. Mm -hmm. uh, and count, uh, then Councilor Christensen and myself sponsored that, a home rule petition, which will allow us to go to 30% uh, from 20%. Uh, that happened in not 2012, but 2000, actually, yeah, 2000, late 2010, was approved last year, 2011, too late to get anything done. Uh, this past week we did it. Uh, that'll give everybody who's a homeowner in the city about an average of 150 to $175 of a tax break on, you know, on what they do. Now that burden goes over to the non-owner occupied mm -hmm. uh, home. Uh, which for, you know, for myself, I consider that to be a commercial enterprise. Much like you run a right. commercial enterprise, you pay about $23 on a thousand. Yep. Yep. Uh, their rate gets raised nowhere near $23 on a thousand, probably more in the 14 to $15 mm -hmm. uh, a, a thousand uh, right. range. 
but those of us who live in our homes get a discount on it. So yeah. it's, a, it's a good deal. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, in the next year, everybody's going to see that on their, on their tax bill. So if you actually look at your tax bill and your homeowner, and you look at it five years ago and you look at it today, uh, you're not really paying any more today than you were five years ago. Can't no say kidding. that in many communities. No, you certainly can't. You know, so. You certainly can't. Wow, so, so. So I did a lot of talking. Did, no, that's all good stuff, all good stuff. I know you were on with uh, Ed Lucy a couple of weeks back. <coughs> and I was. I, I didn't catch it, but he said it was a very fiery exchange. And um, yeah, I know you had some opinions of uh, the past election. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I did. And uh, some disappointments, I, I, I guess. And yeah, I think that uh, it's, it's disappointing, you know, for me, uh, that a person like Scott Brown, yeah. if a person like Scott Brown couldn't win in, in, uh, in Massachusetts, yeah. you, you begin to wonder, uh, is there really any hope for the Republican Party in yeah. Massachusetts? But, you know, oftentimes out of uh, uh, the worst scenario, you know, things yeah. rise up out yeah. of it. Uh, on a national standpoint, um, yeah, it was a, di a disappointment, particularly for somebody who's uh, as fiscally conservative as I am. Mm -hmm. uh, it's great that we want all these things, yeah. you know, uh, but the reality is when, when you're 16 bil uh, trillion in debt in and you got a trillion dollars in debt every year yeah. under the existing system, can we really afford to give free health care run yeah. by the government? Right. Um, I've Should we allow them to do it? Well, I mean, I've been close, you know, close enough to the government in my life. Not, a, you know, I've always worked in the private sector in my full-time job as a uh, financial operational person, uh, and you, and close enough to the government to know that I'm not sure there's anything that I can think of that they run well. Right. There's things they need to be in because of the nature of the business. Right. Uh, but you know, people point to Canada and people point to Great Britain and and Sweden and places like that. But when they peel back the onion, yeah. uh, they find out those people who can afford to, uh, say from Canada, and they need a heart operation, they don't wait around in Canada because they're likely to die. Right. They come to the United States. They fill up the Boston hospitals to get operations. Why is that? Yeah. That's because uh, we deliver and we yeah. deliver good customer service. Clearly, I, I understand from the standpoint, you know, uh, you can't, you also can't keep having health insurance rise by 11%. You must deal with it in your business. Constantly. You know, so that, that's a huge, uh, huge issue. So on a national level, I look at that and say, hey, I really can't impact that. Is it disappointment for me? More from, uh, from the standpoint of I have four children. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's unconscionable. Yeah. Unconscionable. Uh, that we, the baby boom generation, which you and I are both part yeah. of, uh, have taken out the credit card and, uh, and essentially said, okay, we're going to put it on our kids. Yeah. Uh, that is wrong. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't think there's a person out there who would say that's right. Yeah. And yet, everybody says, well, we need to cut government, yeah. right? Yeah. But when they step up to the plate and they yeah. say they're going to cut something that's yeah. that you're interested in right. 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 oh well wait a second don't yeah. cut that right. cut that over exactly. there but every you know i think at, at the end of the day maybe the best way to do it is just say hey government's got to be cut by 15 percent 10 percent whatever it is to get us close to a balanced budget because we yeah. can't keep running like this and again uh you know nobody you know you go back to the time of jefferson and he you know i can't repeat it verbatim but he basically said no generation uh, should be allowed to take their debts and put them on the next generation. Yep. They should all, before they die, yep. should have to pay those debts off. Yep. It's no different than if you or I went out exactly. and said, oh, we want a house and a boat and all, yep. you know, all these things. And just rack it up on the card and let my kid pay for it, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not right. So, that, you know, that's for me the, uh, the big break uh, in terms of... of uh, of that type of thing, and I don't know where it ends because there's, you know, maybe we've reached that tipping point where people can't uh, reason their way yeah. through it in a large sector of the population. I'm, I'm upset. Um, you know, it's funny because, of course, election night. Oh my God! You know, we're going to reach across the aisle and we're going to, you know, um, not be partisan, and and I, 
I haven't seen a lick of it. It actually seems even worse now. I mean, uh, I just think Elizabeth Warren made some some, some real strong comments about, uh, you know, how, how she's supporting the liberal cause and, and wants her constituents and people that voted for her to, to, to vote. Uh, I guess yeah, to pay money well, to a liberal, a liberal organization. She's probably just, it's it's amazing. I don't think that they're gonna they're gonna step up to the plate and, and reach across the aisle, much like Tip O'Neill did, and and you know. Uh, yeah, it Ronald seems Reagan like the, just, uh, the uh, there is a um, an interesting book out there uh, that was that was out. I think the beginning of this year um, uh, by Charles Murray, and it's called Coming Apart. And if anybody's interested, it's a great read in terms of what's happening. Um, and, it, and I think it's not only happening the way they describe it, which is uh, more regionally, but they say, for instance, the, uh, in Massachusetts is a prime example he talks about, it, and they call it the city of Wayland. Uh, and the city of Wayland and the surrounding areas are where all the rich and educated people congregate. And we have these zones throughout the country, uh, so that uh, that the country is polarized uh, in many respects because of this, uh, where uh, the only time uh, the very wealthy uh, and the you know well-to-do from an education, you know, the, the both the wife and the husband went to college, uh, they don't necessarily encounter cities like Malden uh, on a daily basis. Uh, you you know you do because you're here and, and the type of you know manufacturing is essentially yeah. what you do. Right. We don't have a lot of that in the country anymore. Yeah. Uh, but a hundred years ago, uh, we had plants in Malden, uh, and because of transportation, people couldn't be separated that far. Right. So the wealthy lived near their factories right. generally. So yeah. the Converses lived in Malden. Uh, the people who owned Malden Mills lived in Malden. They lived over in the West End. So they couldn't really ignore everything going on. And I think uh, uh, that, due to nobody's fault, just due to technology changes, has allowed us to separate ourselves uh, you know, from one another. Uh, and it, it's not just by m money, but oftentimes, uh, in a, a large extent, by education. Sure. Uh, so that you get two segments of society polarized from one another. It's not a good thing. I think we further polarize politically, yeah. and it seems to be you're polarizing in geographic areas now. Yeah. I think a lot of that has to do with, uh, at least from my standpoint, the uh, brainwashing that goes on in the public school systems in America as well. Uh -huh. uh, you know, which gets, <laughs> it gets me into a controversial yeah. area. Right, right. Uh, but I think it's pretty hard to deny. Right. Uh, what happens uh, when uh, people go off to college, uh, the vast majority of college are very liberal, uh, and they come out and they may not, not, I don't think it's a purposeful thing, I think this is just how it ends up being, right. and they don't think about anything yeah. else. So have I done enough talking? No, today? it's all great <laughs> stuff. I mean, it, it, it's very, very fascinating. Um, and yeah, I was, I was disappointed in the whole election because I just, I would like to see more representation. I think it was great having a Republican senator representing Massachusetts. Yeah. We had a good balance. Between and bipartisan, somebody who could make a exactly. deal on both That's sides. And again, thing. this polarized thing, right? He was known to, to, to be, you know, bipartisan and, and, and uh, you know, and, and I just think it was a shame. And the guy, you know, I don't know, I, I, I've gotten to know Scott Brown. I think he's a decent guy and, yeah. and, and he is the real deal. He's, he's what he says he is. And, and you know, I, I was kind of surprised that, uh, you know, he, he didn't win. I, I would have, earlier on in the election, I, I didn't think he even, there was a question or an issue because he was yeah, see, such yeah, a strong and I said, I said this to, uh, to former Mayor Lucy the night I was here. Yeah. Uh, I wanted him to win. Yeah. I make no bones about that. Uh, again, more middle of the road. Yeah. Could come to agreement with uh, people on issues. Uh, but he was facing a, uh, a mountain. Democratic machine? Because uh, not just the machine, but anytime you're in a presidential election, exactly. everybody comes out and votes during the pl right. presidential election. And, and anybody and that was going to vote for the president, Obama, right, they was unlikely to split their exactly. ticket. Exactly. You know, so I think that's what he ran against. Right. I think had he run against Elizabeth Warren in a normal cycle, not a presidential right. cycle, uh, very good chance he could have beat her. But, exactly. I, you know, 
I don't think there was any hope for him in a presidential cycle. Yeah. Uh, and that, you know, I shouldn't say any hope. I think there was always hope, but yeah. in my mind, it was uh, it was the a odds were against it. very much. And, against and the one thing that's really disturbing, I, I don't know uh, what you to say. I'm sure you you know you know. Uh, yeah, it was. I mean, I I was. I mean, the again, night another before. guy. Yeah. I know Richard, you know, pretty well, yeah. and uh, another guy. Uh, if you can't beat John Tierney yeah. with the baggage yeah. that oh, he yeah. had, yeah, and the lies, the how, yeah, how you know? Yeah. I mean, and we again. Is it really credible yeah. that your wife's running an offshore yeah. gambling business, and you don't know that th that money's no, no. where that money's coming? Two hundred thousand dollars yeah. additional income. You, yeah, household. you either. Don't know. You either know, yeah. right? And she's in jail today. You right. either know, or you don't know. And if if you, you know, then it's criminal, right? Correct. If you don't know, you're really not with it, right? You're not right? confident. So you're serve. not confident. I agree. <laughs> so I it's totally, one or the other, right. at least for me, but clearly totally not agree. for the voters. You exactly. Know? So the voters, hey, it's not the first time okay. somebody who's been convicted of something has gotten elected. You yeah. know, uh, and usually it does happen in cities. Yeah. You know, we had Marion Barry down in Washington, oh, D.C. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you would hope that it doesn't happen to the level of uh, congressmen. But yeah. Well, look, we had three yeah. three House speakers that uh, ended up in jail. Right. You know? You know, so. What does that tell you about yeah. the state? And, uh, so know. back to more, you know, back well, to more. Well, what's your take on, on, the, on this fiscal cliff? And, and, I mean, do you think there's going to be any resolution? Do you think uh, time's ticking? We've I think they'll, about make, I think they'll make a deal. I think that the the, uh, yeah, I think they'll make a deal. I think there'll be enough Republicans, uh, unfortunately, who cave, um, uh, and that's due to you know that's that's due to human nature and wanting to survive. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they'll be able to pick off enough Republicans who uh, who cave on the issue, and uh, you know, he'll uh, the president will get most of what he wants. Um, and, and you know, take the uh, look. If if he got the tax on the rich the way he wants to get, mm -hmm. I think it'll probably hurt the economy. Absolutely. Uh, but let's say he did. Uh, I'd be you know, for me, I'd be less concerned if if that were to happen, and they were get to get substantial in the bargain, substantial cuts to the entitlement programs. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, for, for instance, Social Security. Right. Guys like me need to work till I'm 70 or older, right. to be probably older, to be able to collect it. Yeah. And I know that seems harsh, uh, but that's the reality behind it. And, you know, I w again, I was on with uh, Mayor Lucy, and when they enacted the program, the average person lived to 58, and Correct. you couldn't collect till 65. Right. Right. And as the age has, you know, of people has gone up, They've actually, re, you know, initially reduced it so you could re, retire at 62. Right, right. And uh, it's, that actuarially can't work in the right. long run. Yeah. And that's what we're encountering, not hope. only on that. So hopefully yeah. if they're going to cave on the tax issue, yeah. uh, they cut a real bargain that gets mm -hmm. real controls on the cost side of the issue. Yeah. Otherwise, two years from now? We'll be right back in the same boat, and no we're just question. kicking the can down, you know, down yeah. the road, yeah. and it'll just get worse. Yeah. It's it's a shame because I mean you you know what I what I don't like is the the discussion of raising taxes, but there's no mention of, of making cuts. And you know you run a household and, and 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 even in a business. I mean you you know if you're tightening your belt, you tighten your belt. It doesn't mean. You know, yeah. you, you, you're spending less, and you have to spend less, and you have to bring in more. You can't just, you know, you can't just. Yeah, no, the, I think, you have to I mean, both. I mean, with, with a company, I mean, if, if, if things get, get tough or, or when, when we go through some tougher times, which happens in, in any business, I mean, what do you do? You don't just automatically raise your prices and, and make yourself, you know, uncompetitive in the marketplace. You have to look internally and, and lower your costs and see where you can save some money. Yeah. And that's that's what you do before you raise your prices. I yeah. mean, because you don't want to, you know, not get bit loose. Right, but they generally the government doesn't think about yeah. us, the people, as customers. Exactly. You know, yeah. uh, they get uh, caught into the government, and uh, and they think about 
those in government before they think about you know the thousands who elected them into office. You, you, you know, you know. I think there's, there's so many people in this country, and, I, and I've spoken to many people that label themselves Republican or Democrat, and you know, it's it's pretty funny because they'll they'll say they're a Democrat. Well, why are you Democrat? Um, because the Democrats are for the people. I'll hit lines like that. And, and, and my father was a Democrat. My grandfather was. I'm going to be one. And, and you know what's funny? I mean, you look at the Demo you look at FDR. Yes. Harry Truman. Uh, you look at, at JFK. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's a different party than it is today. I mean, I, I said this when I was on with Ed just a couple of weeks ago. JFK's famous speech. That's not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Right. That's not the Democratic philosophy today. It really isn't. It's what can the country, you know. Oh, no, there's I, no question. And, and, and the country has turned into what can, what what can you do for what me? Can I get and you know, not, it's becoming not the land of opportunity, yeah, right. but the land of entitlement. Entitlement. And you get entitlement. penalized and if, for Unless we, you know, have that yeah. message, we're yeah. in deep trouble. People came to this country like my grandfather yep. to make a better life. They worked hard tirelessly. They worked and, right, and and they, they they did it for themselves and for their family. And you know, they my grandfather started and, and grew a business and then hired people and it just grew. And then fortunately, yeah. my father and uncles went in, and then you know, myself and my cousins are in there now running it. And I mean, we we want to grow, and, and it's not just for us. I mean, we have two hundred plus families that we feel like we we're responsible. Yeah, for. Uh, and we're a, not Scrooge. We're not well, these Yeah, and I don't think I don't think people are. I think what's gotten away from it. And I think what's gotten away from the Democratic Party is, because um, they aren't the party of the people of of, tr of Truman for me. Exactly. You know, who uh, in my eyes is a hero. Exactly. A guy I like think, Harry I Truman's think. a hero. Um, even and, even and, FDR, who, and, who put, put these play, these programs in place to help the truly needy to get back on their feet. I mean, that's why. Well, you know, welfare, I, form, of social security. Went but go ahead. I'll let you talk about Truman. Yeah, well, I, I think Truman's uh, with FDI carried yeah. out his plans, but in terms of some of the difficult decision he made. Yeah. But uh, from a social conservative yeah. uh, standpoint, FDR, on the other hand, I think was, uh, look, every economist uh, that's worth their salt today uh, would tell you that uh, the things that they put in place, uh, what the Fed did yeah. and what FDR did, uh, prolonged the Depression. The Depression was a product of mismanagement of government, not the original Depression. But we had had uh, depressions just as deep uh, in the 1870s and the 1890s, uh, and then we got the Fed in 1913. You know, I believe we should have the Fed, but the Fed was just still learning, you know, a shot less than 20 years later, uh, didn't have the type of econ uh, econ uh, econometrics uh, that they have today, didn't know all they know today, and they tightened the money supply, uh, which, you know, everybody knows, uh, kills the economy. FDR put in all kinds of regulations, uh, raised fees all over the place, uh, raised taxes, uh, and, and this, this killed growth. Uh, and they kept trying, and the only thing that ultimately got us out of the Great Depression was World War II. You know, the build up to World War II, uh, really about 1940. In fact, in 1937, uh, we had uh, re really fallen back into uh, what was going on. The economy was terrible. Unemployment was almost 20% again. Uh, and, uh, you know, so, but FDI did know this. When he put Social Security in, uh, the original plan was that it would be you would own your own plan. He said, no, no, it, and it was FDR, said, no, we're not going to do it that way. We're going to have the government do it, and, the, and he knew. And the plan was uh, that eventually the people will know the Democratic Party put this in, and they will become dependent upon this, mm -hmm. and this will expand. It's going to expand as we get, you know, bigger population and all mm -hmm. that. And uh, he was prophetic about it in mm -hmm. terms of, uh, what it did do. So, uh, Social Security, uh, great idea. Uh, how it's structured is a Ponzi scheme mm -hmm. um, when you have a population that's not as large as the ones we had. When it originally started, there were eight people paying for every one person on it. Mm -hmm. uh, we're down to under four people paying for every one person on it uh, within 
30 years, it'll be down to about two people for every one person. You can't afford it. Right. You can't do it. Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, those type of things brought on the nanny state. So, yeah. not, you know, for me, not a big fan of FDR. Yeah. Um, although, you know, like every president, doesn't matter which party, they've done some good things, some bad mm -hmm. things. And, uh, you know, I think it's gotten us, though, it's that long road. Uh, that's just eaten us away since FDR, because mm -hmm. that was the beginning of, you know, the government taking care of you. Yeah. Uh, prior to that, that you know, uh, that wasn't the case. That wasn't the mantra of the uh, Democratic Party. Uh, but that's where this the idea scary of thing is, th them for the working class and the Republicans for the rich. Right, right. Um, look, we just need to be American and, and, exactly. and get this thing together. I mean, the scary thing is uh, a lot of the Democratic uh, rhetoric sounds very socialistic right now. And is, you there, know, any, is there any question? There it is, is no they, question. They're and, socialists. And, they and, are socialists. And, and, and socialism Eliz is... You know, Elizabeth Warren is a socialist. Yeah. Barack Obama is a socialist. Mm -hmm. And if you, you know, if you go back and you, and you go back 30, 40 years uh, and look at what socialism was, mm -hmm. They are socialists. Doesn't you know, socialists are evil people? They have a yeah. different philosophy right. on things, but, how, but they they can't say it in America. They can't. How close it. is it to communism? It's it's, it's not uh, socialism. Is is is, is pretty much uh, uh, that which is scary. It is very scary. Uh, and there again, there's another book out there, a great book, uh, The Road to Serfdom. I don't know if you've ever no. uh, read it by a. Uh, Friedrich Hayek, uh, okay. uh, great economist. Uh, he was the antithesis of uh, Keynes, okay. uh, and and uh, he wrote a book during World War II. Uh, he was from Austria. Uh, he is the father of Austrian economics, which you know, University of Chicago and all that. Uh, but uh, his premise in the book, uh, written during World War II, uh, was that. Um, if you looked at uh, if you looked at Germany, uh, Germany was not Hitler was not an accident. Uh, Hitler was a matter of conditioning, and the conditioning was uh, essentially the German nanny state. Uh, Bismarck in 1870 uh, had put in the first social security system, uh, and then they progressively went to more things like health care and all this. Uh, where the government was helping out, and the government was much more involved in the lives, much like they have, uh, it has become in America, mm -hmm. you know, 70, 80 years later. Mm -hmm. So uh, when Hitler came to power, and I talked with uh, former Mayor Lucy about this briefly, uh, he came to power by the vote. He was mm -hmm. elected in, yeah. uh, and a lot of people forget that. Uh, but the premise of the book is that uh, Nazism was socialism, national socialists. Hitler's hero was Mussolini. Mussolini was a socialist, mm -hmm. uh, tr right through socialist. And socialism developed into fascism. And it was allowed to develop into fascism by the people uh, the same way in Italy elected, Mussolini was originally elected mm -hmm. because they became uh, the they became used to, conditioned to the government doing. The government, oh, the government will fix it. The government will do this. We want from the government. And then suddenly, when the government starts telling you things that aren't quite right, nobody stands up. Right. And so when, you know, uh, when Hitler started saying, okay, uh, you know, we're, uh, those who are mentally ill, uh, we're going to take care of them. There were certainly people in Germany who were uneasy about it, but nobody really stood up. They were conditioned. When Hitler went a little further and said, you know, the, the gypsies, we've got to do something with the gypsies. And then, you know, ultimately we all know it led to the Holocaust, right. which probably the vast majority of Germans didn't want anything to do with. But by the time that happens, the government's in control of everything, so right. that one person is a dictator. Yep. Uh, that's the danger of long-term socialism. Mm -hmm. From my standpoint, uh, and believing in what Hayek 
has written. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Hayek was a uh, uh, a hero of uh, Ronald Reagan, um, and you know got many of his ideas from there. So. What do you think of Ronald Reagan? I never voted for Ronald Reagan. Disappointment in my life that I say that, but much like you say, um, I came from a Democratic family uh, who, you know, who absolutely believed uh, that uh, you know the Democrats uh, were for uh, the working class and the Republicans were for, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, at, at a young age, bought that, you know, completely. Uh, so I, my first vote for president was for Jimmy Carter. Okay. Uh, my second vote for president was for Walter Mondale. Right. Uh, my third vote for president was for Judge Bush, because I saw Michael Dukakis up front as a you know yeah. as a resident and a younger person. Uh, that's the first time that I went over, uh, and uh, you know it's been a mixed bag for me. Uh, I can you know. Again, I consider myself an independent Maldonian. I can have no impact yeah. on what goes on outside of Malden. I believe I can have a lot of impact on what goes on in Malden. You know, I've tried to uh, try to do what I can when yeah. I can. Well, I think you're doing a, a great so. job in doing it. I think you're a, you're a popular city councilor. And I, some and I like, day, I some like, days, some days not. I like <laughs> the fire in you, and the uh, you know the you. It, it's nice that you. Uh, you can speak your mind, and you're not afraid to to state your opinion, and you don't hide behind because you're from Malden. You don't say, you know, I have to be a Democrat because, yeah, you know, I, I grew up in a Democratic. Yeah, family. I just got to try to do the right thing. Right, exactly. You know, you know, no matter what that is. Right. Uh, as a counselor, it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat. You know, I'm not. I'm. I'm not going to uh, deal on any major issues. My my issues are. Is your street getting done? Are the pipes working? Right. Do you have public safety? You right. know, right. are the police there? Are we reducing crime? Yep. What are we doing to do that type of thing? Right. Those are the issues. That that's not a Democrat or Republican right. issue. We all want uh, safety, and you know, I think uh, that's the mayor's uh, currently his biggest challenge, uh, and I think. Um, I think uh, a you know this is where I differ with many of I think my uh, fellow counselors and again they may be right I I may, I may be all wet on this but I think the most important thing in any community in any community first and foremost is safety from a sure. s police standpoint yep. and uh, if we if M Malden wants to uh, uh, progress in the future and be the great city that it can be, that it can be, a few things need to happen. It's, it's not a complex, it may be a complex problem, it is not that, it is not that complex. If our crime rate was a quarter of what it is today, lots of people would say, I don't want to move. We need to get that in order first. That's got to come first before anything. Right. You know, uh, we could spend uh, ten times as much as we're spending on the public school system mm -hmm. uh, or any school system. If you don't get crime in control, good families aren't staying. They're mm -hmm. not coming. Mm -hmm. And I think our recent crime wave uh, that we've had, uh, although our overall crime in incidents per day less our overall crime incidents for the last three years or less the number of violent crimes particularly in some areas have gone up significantly uh, we have got to eradicate that and that has got to come first and they, you know if, if there's a place I differ uh, with some of my colleagues uh, this city has done spent exorbitant amount on education uh, much like the state much like the country uh, over the last 40 years right. with little to no result. It's more, you know, if you make it the safest city and then the next thing is make your infrastructure, meaning your streets, mm -hmm. sidewalks, get done, and they're clean. If this was the cleanest city and the safest city, our schools would be good. Guarantee it. Guarantee it. Because mm -hmm. the proximity of Boston is, you know, Incredible. Yeah. 
so you you know you if you look at Brookline, yeah. safer, Clear. cleaner, yep. right? No different in terms of how many T stations, that type of thing. Right. Uh, they they started off differently. We this community made some terrible mistakes in the last hundred years, uh, but it can be corrected. Uh, but the general liberal philosophy of pour more money into the public school system, yeah. it's not going to get it done. I guarantee you that too. Yeah. And uh, and it's not to pick on the public school. It's the nature of the beast. They just eat the money, and uh, and generally. Uh, it hasn't it hasn't done the job for us. Make it the safest city, the cleanest city, and they will come. Safest city, cleanest yeah. city. That's my view. I, I hear you. you know? I, I think you're right. And you talk about government. I mentioned this before. I was on my first trip to D.C. I was on a bus trip at school. I'll never forget. We're driving the bus down the street, and we had some someone giving a bit of a tour. And this building is the Department of This. I mean, huge buildings that go one for blocks. Yeah. And they weren't vacant buildings. And they housed departments I never even heard of then. And probably today wouldn't have even known existed. And you just, you know, in my young mind, I was probably 10, 12 years old, and I thought, wow, you know, I, I mean, tax dollars, I never paid taxes then, but yeah. tax dollars are going to pay these salaries and these people. And is it necessary? Is it necessary to have these buildings and these people, these departments and layers and levels? And, and it's, you know. Yeah, I, I, again, I think uh, I, the government is. Uh, is far too big today as a percentage of the gross domestic product. Yep. Uh, uh, I don't know, you know, but we've elected, we, the people, yeah. have elected people who believe in that. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. You know, history tells us generally that and doesn't go too well. Now, Romney, I don't know if you were a fan or not, I, I just, I would have loved to see how he could have helped the economy. Being a, a businessman, mm. you know, being a... Uh, Fiscally conservative and, and and knowing a lot about the economy business, I was even hoping. I mean, there's some buzz about it, but I don't think it's going to go anywhere. That he was going to join forces with Obama. I think talk about reaching across the aisle. And, yeah. And Obama talked about putting on a secretary of business, even though there is a secretary of commerce already. But right. But somebody that I mean, are they that? Yeah, they, I don't. I don't see that happening. Were they that I mean, uh, to to uh, divisive? Well, I, I, again, the. Uh, it appears uh, as though the president has said, look, I've won. Yeah. Uh, you didn't take the Senate back. Yeah. Uh, and uh, full steam ahead. Right. That is certainly his prerogative. Yeah. He did win. Yeah. Uh, so I almost wish he won the House, too. Yeah. Uh, because, <laughs> you know, like Parliament, it would be better. Let him do his programs. Yeah. Let him do everything he wants. If it works, great. Great for the country. If it doesn't, they're out of there. Right. You know? Uh, and then let somebody else try with uh, a different philosophy. Well, now it's the finger pointing, and of course they're all they're blaming Bush for everything that. Yeah, that, that's, you know that's, 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 good, that's even, what are they going to blame yeah. blame him in four years? Yeah, from exactly. Now? Yeah, I, I think at some point, you know, the average person doesn't look too much at this, but if the economy, if unemployment stays, you know, relatively where it's at, uh, people are jobless. I thought that was going to happen the last cycle. Though. I mean, I, I, the economy was horrible. Gas prices were high. There was trouble, uh, you know, across in the Middle East and in, in, in the, 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 the Libya assault. But I we mean, give 99 weeks of unemployment now. Yeah, yeah. So people were on I, on I, that, right? Channel 7 and, News. Uh, and there's 47% uh, yeah. or whatever of children on food stamps, right? right? right. I mean... Uh, it is a challenge yeah. in terms of uh, think, but but it break you know yeah. it broke down again to your point. Is it communism? Yeah. It's not communism, but ultimately socialism breaks down because people decide: Am I going to work that extra hour, or am I going to well, loaf? Because years, years you know, ago, years no ago, use. people would, would would lose their job and they'd, they'd pump gas, they'd work at a convenience store, they did what they could until and, and these were educated, skilled people. Yeah. that lost a job but wanted to still work and do something, and they'd come to the bakery, and then they needed to feed their family and take care of their family until right. the economy got better, until they were offered a job that fit their job skills. Yeah. Right. Today, when you can sit at home, collect, and like you said, for 99 weeks. Yeah, yeah well, not what, only that, I mean, look, why, look why what's, the, what's the incentive for a family person, right? And, and this is where I think we, you know, I kind of digress, but on... Uh, I think the guys like uh, uh, 
Truman, FDR, Eisenhower, uh, um, um, Kennedy, even Johnson. And Johnson, Johnson is the one who messed everything up. <laughs> but, uh, and I think it was out of a good heart, don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think those who came before would have said nobody should be able to stay on the dole. Exactly. Uh, for a lifetime. You couldn't right. go into, when, when FDR opened the first public housing projects in South Boston, you, that's the first one in America. Uh, you could not go into a public housing project in America without being a family unit. As soon as Johnson allowed it to be uh, non-family units, uh, you had an explosion of non-families. And, you know, to get, again, to my social conservatism, uh, that's the real downfall of everything because uh, almost nobody can make it on their own in a family. You know, yeah. if you have three kids, yeah. uh, you, can't, you can't, most of us could not afford right. it without a partner. Right, yeah. Uh, and so uh, that has brought down, that, that has brought the need, rather than having a husband and wife uh, you know, you need a daddy. Well, the daddy is the nanny state now. Yeah, yeah. And so we give free housing, yeah. we give free this, you know, we give free cell phones now, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the reality is we need to get back to a time, I think, where we have public housing. You're not going to throw people out on the street, right. but you should not get anything, nothing yeah. for free. Yeah. Every person who's in there should, you know, we're talking about working age people through right. 65 right. or whatever that right. age is. Every one of those people should have to hold down a job right. of some sort. Yeah. Even if that means that we expand the nanny state in terms of the uh, child care yeah. uh, for a certain time. Yeah. Uh, but every person, sh every child should see their parent going out that door yeah. to a job. Yeah. Because if you don't do that, you just increase the cycle. Yeah, yeah. So, so whether it's 10 hours or 20 hours or yeah. something, you should get nothing for free in right. this country. Exactly. Nothing. Yeah. And so uh, that sends a message very early on. But we, we've gotten away from that. Yeah. And that, that has been the, uh, the detraction. I mean, my father worked, you know, like a dog, worked for years. And, and it motivated me to work. I mean, I couldn't imagine not working, and, and, and you know, my dad worked six days a week, 14, 16 hours a day. Yeah. And, um, but it incentivized me, and, and I think my family. I mean, that's what my grandfather did, my uncles did, and that's how they, they made the bakery successful for years, and, and that's so important. Yeah, for me, uh, look, for me, I had, at eight years old, almost nine, uh, my older brother uh, got a regular job working at uh, uh, this will take us back at uh, Grade A Sugar Cone in Maplewood. Uh, it is on the corner of Weight Extension. It's an old factory. You can see that at Maplewood Street, right outside of Maplewood Square. Uh, he got that job, and I took over his paper route that he had had for about six or seven years. Uh, I took that paper route and had that all the way till I was in 11th grade. That was every morning, uh, Monday through Friday. I uh, had to, you know, uh, collect collect money uh, in Maplewood, you know, my, yeah. on my route, and uh, and I tell people that that route, that job, carried with me my entire life. You know, mm -hmm. when you when you're nine, ten years old, and yeah. somebody's trying to beat you out of twenty five cents, oh, yeah. you remember that. Sure. Uh, when you're nine and ten years old, and somebody's giving you a nice tip because. Yeah. They think you did a good job. Yeah. You remember that. That sure. you know. You say, "Oh, that's yeah. how you get ahead, right?" right? right, right. Can't even have a kid do a paper route no. anymore. No. But I mean, and here I was at you know at that age, going out uh, like lots of kids in this city, lots yeah. of kids all over the country, sure. yeah, getting up at five thirty in the morning, yeah. going out and delivering newspapers before school, yeah. right? Getting back, getting ready for school, and going to school. All types uh, of weather. All. all didn't didn't matter. Christmas, yeah. Thanksgiving, those papers had to be delivered. Right. Never thought about not, you know, yeah. even in all those years, I can only remember one or two times 
saying I'm too sick, and right. you know, my brother, my younger brother, yeah. uh, would get up and do the do okay. the route. I'd write out the paper, but yeah. I never had never called the news agency wow. and said can't do it. Yeah. No, we're talking about an eight year time frame yeah. here. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, but I think that was a, you know, the money, uh, beside. I think that was an unbelievable learning experience from the standpoint of customer service to the customers, right? Uh, dealing with them face to face, Absolutely. collecting your money, uh, and you know maybe that uh, also helped me uh, or hurt me in terms of having the edge that some people describe as having. <laughs> no, it's work you know? ethic. It's just work ethic was important. And, and, and I started to tell you this. You know, I, I saw about a week before the election, there was a, a Elizabeth Warren rally. And it was Channel 7 News. I was watching 11 o'clock at night, and they were interviewing different people in the crowd. And this one woman, she happened to be a minority, and she said, oh, I, you know, I, I love her. She's great. And what do you like about her? And just the news person wasn't even, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a liberal. It's not, a, it's not Fox. And she said, this was her quote. She said, I just signed up for my third and final uh, extension for unemployment. I, I injured my foot. And then she's there at the, you know, and she didn't look like yeah. she was uh, hurting or, you know. And uh, she said, I just think she's great. I'm, I'm, she's got my vote. And that, I don't even know why she had to say that, but that, I was like, oh, my God, that's who's voting for Elizabeth Warren, people that, that don't want to go out and work. And, 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 and then, you know, when you talk about this redistribution, now we're going to go, you know, I mean, why should you work hard? If you had to work hard and if you're working two jobs or even just, you know, finally make it up the ladder and, and earn enough to... To take care of your family and a little extra for for maybe a, a vacation home or whatever you want to do, vacation trips or yeah, I, I, college. I, I, and that, I mean, I think that's the most offensive thing that yeah. happened in this campaign se yeah. season is that uh, there, there's been uh, this message of yeah. class warfare. Exactly. And class warfare is detrimental sure is. to the future of the United States because because it is the drive for opportunity yep. and knowing whether people like this or not, yep. knowing that I can get my family ahead and, and myself ahead and, you know, by hard work, yeah. saving a little money, sa investing right. that money, right. li you know, like your grandfather, yep. starting a business, right? And uh, your father and, and yourself now yep. running that business and expanding that yep. business, that creates jobs. It does. That is the golden opportunity for America. And it goes back to it eliminates crime. If people are working and, and, and making money, they're not going to you know, go out and, and, yeah, and, abs and, and have to steal and be violent. You know, you were going to leave early. And I, I was. And, and <laughs> we could go on for another hour. But uh, this was I really be, appreciate coming. That was great having, having you on. Yeah, I, I wanted this Thank to be you. a Christmas lighthearted show. And, yeah. Uh, but well, I, just, I, you know, I do hope everybody, Hanukkah is coming yeah. upon us. And I hope Absolutely. everybody has a, a great Hanukkah and Christmas yeah. season. And, uh, and Kwanzaa well. too is yeah. is is uh, coming up, and just want to wish every ha ha happy I holidays. Know, yeah. I'm back in January. I want to have you on. I mean, we we can get yeah, back into absolutely. So anytime. after the first of the year, uh, we'll we'll go back. Yeah. And uh, but but Merry Christmas. Ed's on and, next week, and hopefully hopefully we'll have some good news on the pay as you throw. That'll be the New Year's present that exactly. the, mayor, the mayor and the council right. brings to uh, to the city. Thanks. Merry All Christmas. Right. Merry Christmas and everything. Thank you, everybody. Happy holidays. Thanks. Bye. Let me get a chance to Are we you. off? The, no, we're still on. Okay. <laughs> the Bread of Life is having their, uh, their game for community, uh, which, by the way, call MATV. You'll find out about it. It's uh, Friday, December 1st, 21st at 1 o'clock is the uh, game for the community. Call MATV. Thanks, Neil. Great job, Neil. Appreciate it.